squash and stretch. So in 1937, uh, Disney uh, released uh, his version of Snow White, and this was the first full-length uh, feature film using uh, hand-drawn cell animation, and it was quite uh, revolutionary. And to see uh, how that uh, contrasted with the previous uh, animation at the time, let's uh, compare another classic, uh, Betty Boop's Snow White from 1933, with uh, Disney's Snow White. So here we have a short clip from Betty Boop. We've, uh, in this tutorial, we're talking about squash and stretch, and you should notice how the um, characters in uh, Betty Boop are very elastic and almost rubbery. Uh, this is not what is meant by squash and stretch. So uh, this stretching here of these uh, elastic uh, characters is uh, is something different. So let's uh, look at a short clip from um, Disney Snow White. So, so notice this is a very different uh, style. Still uh, a lot of exaggeration and uh, comedy in the in the motions but much more much more believable and realistic in the um, movements so this uh, of course especially for Snow White herself uh, she's presented as a very realistic uh, human character now, uh, Disney felt that uh, to have a successful feature-length uh, film, as opposed to just a short, uh, the audience wouldn't uh, sit through uh, something that didn't engage them in terms of the characters, and uh, so in order to create uh, believable, engaging uh, characters, uh, Disney's animators did many life studies and developed uh, these uh, principles of animation, which we, we've seen a number of these principles in other tutorials. But you notice the number one principle is uh, squash and stretch. So the uh, thought that the um, characters needed to have a very believable type of a motion uh, that didn't wasn't simply uh, rubbery elastic. It um, needed to follow uh, what we know from uh, reality. Now, we've seen uh, basic kinds of squash and stretch from the various simplest uh, uh, from the simplest uh, animation exercises, such as uh, ball bounce. So. There's a stretch, which uh, typically conveys motion blur. Uh, there's also uh, some squash, uh, indicating uh, impact. Uh, but the principle of squash and stretch, even though it appears in uh, virtually every animation exercise, it's really essential for uh, creating a sense of uh, believability for characters, basically to bring uh, characters alive. And uh, even something which we know is normally not a living character, like a table lamp, uh, with the appropriate use of squash and stretch, uh, a lot of acting can be um, 
created and um, bringing the, uh, the character to life. So here's a quote from um, John Lasseter. Uh, an object need not deform in order to squash and stretch. For instance, a hinged object like Luxo Jr. squashes by folding over on itself and stretches by extending out fully. Uh, let's look at a short clip from uh, Luxo Jr. So. So, we see very definite personality in the uh, in the two lamps. It's uh, parent and child. Uh, and all of that really conveyed with a uh, relatively simple rig, uh, but with the appropriate use of squash and stretch. Now, in uh, learning the importance of squash and stretch and how it applies in character animation, uh, often students learning animation practice with uh, exercises such as the sack drop. So here's um, a pencil test of a uh, sack drop. Here's a, some reference. And another common exercise is the water balloon drop. So here's two examples of that. Now in both cases, these uh, are good practices for uh, preparing to do character animation because the uh, sack and the water balloon both have some of the characteristics of an animate uh, living object. So um, here's some reference from a water balloon drop. So as it's bouncing on the ground, it almost uh, feels as if it's alive. Uh, here's a, some more reference. So if we uh, look at the various elements of the uh, water balloon drop, uh, there's the initial drop, the uh, squash, uh, the bounce, the settle, and uh, throughout we see a lot of uh, motion in terms of the shape of uh, the water balloon. Uh, it's not just changing shape on the squash, it actually is um, squashing and stretching uh, in the drop, in the impact, um, throughout the bounce, and even uh, throughout the settle. So in the next uh, set of tutorials, we're going to be uh, looking at the physics behind the uh, squash and stretch, and a lot of the examples we'll use will be from the uh, from the sack drop and from the water balloon drop. So in summary, squash and stretch is the first principle of animation. Uh, squash and stretch uh, is seen in all types of animated motion from the simple bouncing ball, uh, but most importantly in uh, uh, complex character animation. Uh, even Characters with rigid uh, limbs, like Luxo Jr., have squash and stretch from the bending joints, and that's what leads to making them feel alive. And animating a flower sack or a water balloon is a helpful exercise that uh, leads towards uh, being able to do uh, character animation, and it's particularly useful because it highlights uh, the importance of squash and stretch. So in the next uh, tutorials, we'll be uh, diving into the uh, physics behind squash and stretch. See you then.